Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Art is something that is subjective to a lot of people, but in terms of what makes it into an art museum, that obviously has standards. Not just any high school art project can make it in, and especially not my high school art project. Artist Unknown is the episode where Squidward teaches an art class and Spongebob is the only person that attends and becomes annoyed and jealous when Spongebob makes better art than Squidward. Like Sailor Mouth, this episode aired on September 21st, 2001, and is shockingly the first episode where Squidward's last name, Tentacles, is set on screen. Mr. Tentacles, Professor of Art. And also shows everybody's favorite art piece by Squidward. Not Squidward in repose, but bold and brash. More like belongs in the trash! <laughs> This episode also shows a handful of parodies of famous art pieces like the American Gothic painting and the sculpture of David, the latter done by Michelangelo, as well as introducing the character of Monty P. Moneybags, an art collector. Huh. That's all I have to say about that one. Yeah, shockingly, when I watched this episode again, I discovered I didn't have as much to say about this episode as I thought I would. Don't get me wrong, I do still like it. I don't think it's bad by any means but there just wasn't as much as I remembered about it compared to other episodes this season. I'm not sure why I feel this way, so let's watch this episode to see what it's all about. So the episode starts up and Squidward had a new job as an art teacher at the rec center. He was so excited to start teaching people and thought he'd go down in history until the janitor snapped him back to reality. 9am struck and he sees a whole crowd of people who all leave because they thought this was a cooking class. Except Spongebob, of course, who becomes Squidward's only student. When Spongebob found out that Squidward was his teacher, he says, You are the teacher to my pupil? Pupil? As in, this kind of pupil? Spongebob sat down and Squidward started teaching Spongebob that art is a lot of hard work. After making him repeat that only Squidward has talent, Squidward starts teaching by having Spongebob draw a perfect circle. Squidward draws a sloppy circle, while Spongebob draws a perfect circle. Spongebob's process was drawing a human head and erasing the details. Squidward got mad and crumbled up the paper. Spongebob took that and made origami of him and Squidward playing leapfrog. Squidward ripped up the whole paper and Spongebob forms the scraps into a new picture. Squidward moved on to teaching Spongebob how to make a sculpture out of marble. Marble? I've never tried that before. Squidward just reduced it to a pile of rubble, while Spongebob made the David sculpture. Squidward was amazed, but quickly masked it by saying a good sculpture takes more time. It was part of the rules of art. Oh, maybe that's why this got rejected. I only finished this in like two to three art classes. Squidward added his own notes to the sculpture, calling it art now. Spongebob felt upset and thought he just disregarded Squidward's lessons. He left sadly and got knocked into the dumpster and taken away to the dump. The man who came in was an art collector named Monty P. Moneybags. Monty P. Moneybags or Money P. Moneybags? He was looking for art for his new museum. Squidward showed him a sculpture named Squidward in Repose and a painting called Bold and Brash. Monty didn't like either of them, but soon noticed Spongebob's statue. He thought it was amazing aside from Squidward's nose at the top. Monty wanted to find the artist who made it and make him famous. Squidward fantasized being famous and decided to take the credit for Spongebob's work, to which Monty said he'd make Squidward immortal. He's gonna make Squidward a god? As they tried taking it out to the car, the head broke off. Monty thought Squidward could just make another. Squidward agreed, but also said he could make something even better by tomorrow. Monty left and Squidward went to find Spongebob. Later on, he found Spongebob at the dump, but Spongebob was still too sad to talk to him. Squidward wanted to give Spongebob another chance, but Spongebob was hesitant to agree. But Squidward convinced him otherwise, and Spongebob started to get happy again. When they went back to the classroom, Squidward asked Spongebob to do the marble again, but Spongebob was hesitant. Squidward tried to make him feel better by recapping the circle, but Spongebob had taken Squidward's lessons to heart, and nothing he made was good, not even the circle. After Squidward ripped up the rule book, Spongebob managed to put the scraps back together. That could still come in handy for another student. Squidward took Spongebob back to the marble. Spongebob tried to visualize his concept and started embracing the marble and doing all sorts of things to it, including dating the marble. Oh hi, I'm on a date right now, but I'm kind of nervous. 
I think she's a little shy. SpongeBob took the chisel, but the marble turned into a pile of rubble. Squidward became furious and started destroying all the marble in his classroom. SpongeBob became nervous from the ruckus Squidward was making and ran back to the dump. Right after Squidward finished his rampage, Monty returned. Isn't it still the same day? Squidward gave the janitor the credit and left in a huff. But it turns out the David statue is even better than before and the episode ends. So that was Artist Unknown and you know what that means. I'd say this is a fine episode. This episode does have some great moments. Squidward going crazy at the end is of course the standout moment and I love it just as much as the next guy. It's the scene I remember the most from this episode as a kid. I love Bold and Brash and I would consider this to be art way more than anything in the Raleigh Selfie Museum. Swanob's antics with making the art are really funny. Spongebob and Squidward's banter throughout the episode is awesome too. From when Squidward makes Spongebob repeat after him, the bickering over the various paper art Spongebob does, the scene where Squidward rips up the rule book, etc. Both of the David statues are pretty good too. The second statue shows that Squidward can make amazing art if he just didn't make it all about himself. I was always amused by Spongebob running back to the dump and singing, and those two moments where the chisels caused the marbles to disintegrate. I also like how this episode does have some helpful tips on art, specifically how Squidward says art is a lot of hard work and sculpting takes time and focus. Those are important tips for those who want to take art seriously. There are also some good character moments here, like how Squidward looks visibly upset when he sees how sad Spongebob is, and when Spongebob tries to cheer Squidward up by giving him old, bold, and brash. I also like how Squidward, for the most part, keeps his patience when he's trying to recap everything with Spongebob aside from when he rips up the book and destroys all the marbles. Uh, it's also funny how Spongebob ends up being the only student in Squidward's class and the janitor has some funny lines too. I like this American Gothic parody painting and little gag with Spongebob's hands. I think that might be it in terms of everything I like about this episode the most. Before we get on to the points of criticism, I have a couple nitpicks I want to talk about. First, when Monty returns at the end of the episode, I think it was still the same day as when he left. Even though he agreed to return tomorrow, it seems like he came back the same day as he left. At least since there was no time card or something to indicate otherwise, it's probably still the same day. The other nitpick is, how did Squidward get his job as an art teacher in this episode anyway? Especially since all his art pieces were considered ugly, I wonder how he was hired in the first place. But either way, those are nitpicky details that don't really matter that much, I just felt like sharing them. But other than that, I think that's just about everything major I have to say about this one. The only parts that really made me laugh or even just chuckle were the good scenes that I mentioned before the nitpicks. This is definitely a more simple episode with a small cast of characters where there's not much of an actual plot, more so just the characters' actions carrying the story. But that's not a bad thing at all. There's nothing wrong with having a simple story every now and then. However, if I'm being 100% honest, there are less jokes in here that I laughed at compared to other episodes up to this point. While it's fun when Spongebob starts making bad things later on in the episode when Squidward's trying to teach him again, I honestly expected things like Spongebob drawing an imperfect circle even when I was a kid. I've seen some people say that Squidward is an absolute jerk in this episode where he made Spongebob feel bad and was trying to take credit for his work. To that, I disagree. Even though he scolded Spongebob for his statue, that's clearly because he was jealous of Spongebob's work. He even thought it was amazing at first until he started acting in denial saying you can't make art willy nilly. And him adding his own nose is just him thinking any and all art with him in it is better than all other art. He did make Spongebob sad with his words, but I also feel like Spongebob was being a little over dramatic. Even though he was only trying to talk to Spongebob again to get him to make another statue, he was at least being kind throughout the whole thing until he lost his temper. He could have just acted mean to Spongebob the whole time when relearning everything, even when he was talking to Spongebob at the dump. Or he could have been nice to Spongebob at the dump and then ruthlessly forced Spongebob to remake the statue when back at the class, but he didn't. 
He still felt very genuine when trying to cheer Spongebob up and give him another chance, in my opinion. So I wouldn't say it's mean-spirited, rather Squidward just getting comeuppance for being jealous over Spongebob's art and then him making a glorious statue without even realizing it. Even though that's fun, there's not too much to write home about with this episode. I do still like this episode with the art theme, and I think the story itself plays out nearly perfectly. But I think that's all I have to say about this episode. I personally felt there weren't as many memorable moments throughout the entire runtime, like with its sister episode, episode 75, Sailor Mouth. I wouldn't say this episode is bad, not at all. Maybe it was how I never was good at art when I was a kid, but I doubt it because I'm usually pretty good at forgetting about reality or the stupid decisions I made in the past while watching Spongebob. It's fun, but I don't know what else to say, so I'll just wrap it up now. Artist Unknown is a good episode. There are some awesome memorable quotes in this one, and the art theme storyline and tips are pretty good. I may not have that much more to say about it, but I still like it and think it's fine, and that's really all that matters in this case. Unfortunately, the date I was on with the marble was a bust, so now I have to try to do the same thing but with skills instead. If I ever stop eating them, that is.